Hi, everyone, and welcome to VMware's Partnership Perspectives podcast. I'm Kathleen Tandy, Vice President of Global Partner and Alliance Marketing at VMware, and I'm pleased to bring you the stories and trends from our VMware partners, executives, and industry analysts. This week, I had the opportunity to sit down with Subroto Mukherjee, President of Rackspace in the Americas. Rackspace is one of the leading service providers delivering multi-cloud solutions across applications, data, and security. Together, we discussed how the latest joint offering from Rackspace and VMware, called Rackspace Elastic Engineering, enables companies to scale IT teams, transform multi-cloud environments, and streamline operating models. Listen to the full conversation now. Sibroto, welcome to Partnership Perspectives. It's a pleasure to have you join us today. So I'd love to start our conversation today with your background and the numerous roles that you've had that have led you to your current position as president of the Americas region at Rackspace Technology. Over your successful career, you've moved back and forth from technology vendor to systems integrator and and partner roles, from looking at the the industry and customers from different perspectives. And you've also worked at HP. Back in the day, I think we were there at the same time as well, and with other companies such as Wipro and DXC, other fantastic partners of VMware. Can you share a little bit about your career journey and how it's prepared you for your current role at Rackspace? Thank you, Kathleen. So I think the wisest decision I made in my life after school was to go into technology. And that was uh, more than 35 years ago. I worked in India for a company called Wipro. Then I came to the US. And before coming to Rackspace about three years ago, I spent 20 years as the company I worked for became from you know, Compact to HP to HPE to DXE. And that's where our paths crossed a little bit. I worked both in... Um, customer facing roles right delivering to customers as an account executive as a pnl leader as well as in delivery roles actually running delivery centers for hp globally and in both of those i found one common thing which was that if you focus on delivering value to the customer and taking care of people those two things then other things work out so when this opportunity at rackspace came up And I saw that the top three goals of Rackspace or the only three goals of Rackspace was a fanatical experience for the customer, a best place to work for the employee, and leading to superior financial results. I said, this is simple enough for me to understand. And that's what brought me to Rackspace. I initially came to Rackspace as the CEO of the company. I did that for about uh, two years. And then I decided to move and run our America's business, which is about three quarters of our overall business, a little more than three quarters. And I can imagine as someone who's had the opportunity to be in customer facing roles and be close to the customer and have that same passion for customers that you do, not that you didn't get some of that in the chief operating officer role, but I can imagine that you have more opportunity to connect directly with customers in the America's region role. Yes, that's absolutely true. Both to connect more with customers and work even more closely with our fantastic partners. I find that due to all of the reasons that everybody knows, digital disruption, digital disruptions caused by the pandemic and all of that, the customer's need for help from a technology partner is only increasing, especially as technology is becoming ever more critical to their business. So being in a role like this, where you work closely with customers and with partners is exciting. I'm so glad you mentioned that because one of the topics or the questions that I wanted to ask you was from your purview, from your ability, I'm sure, on a daily basis to be talking to customers. I'm curious to hear, as you speak with them, what's top of mind? What are those concerns that you're hearing? And from the different perspectives and roles you've had over your career, How do you see those concerns, those business requirements, their focus on technology? How have you seen that change? What is different, but maybe what still remains the same and has been a constant over those years? The importance of technology to the success of the enterprise has increased a lot over the last few decades. So it's almost like every business today is fundamentally a technology business. 
technology has to enable the business to be successful. So the criticality of technology to the business is dramatically increased across every industry, every customer segment. That I would say is one clear change or, or something that's different today than it was earlier. The second is that the skills gap has only increased further. So predictions that computers would make whatever technology support people or technology development people redundant have not only not come true, but the reverse has happened that the gap between demand and supply for technology people has only increased. And as the skills gap, as well as the both in terms of skills and in the terms of quantity has increased, Customers look to partners who can help them leverage technology to meet their business goals. And that's where partners like Rackspace and VMware and others come in place. I couldn't agree more. One of the other topics that I hear as I talk to other executives, your colleagues and executives across partners and customers and our technology vendors alike, is along with the importance of technology to the business, And this has also been just accelerated over the last two years as we've all relied so heavily on technology during the pandemic. But it's also the complexity of technology. It's just not as simple and which is also, I think, exacerbating that skills gap as well. Would you agree? Absolutely. So as we said, it's become more critical to business. B, it has become more complex. C, the gap between good use of technology and bad use of technology has increased. So I have this, for example, well-architected application is not two times more efficient than a badly architected application. It is 10,000 times more efficient than a badly architected application. And with that level of difference, the importance of leveraging the right technology to do the right application has increased dramatically. So yes, the complexity has increased, the gap between great and average has increased. And as the importance to business has increased, the need to use the right technology for the right application has become critical to survival. And with that, as you mentioned, the more companies are looking to technology partners across all dimensions to be able to help them navigate this complexity, navigate the increased importance. But I'd also like to get your perspective on what I'm seeing and what I hear as I have many conversations with customers and partners, which coupled with that, and maybe it's driven by the fact that it is just becoming so complicated, is that we're also moving and shifting in our industry kind of driven by SaaS, driven by customers' interest in renting versus owning, but it's all focused on wanting to know, how do I apply technology? How do I apply it to deliver the business outcomes and get the results of it? And it's less about focusing on the capabilities and the technology of itself. If I think about it from audio equipment, Everyone used to be really focused on the old days of LPs, the capabilities of their turntable and the qualities of the speakers. Now it's, I'm streaming on Spotify. I just want to hear it on demand. Are you saying that factor into the conversations with your customers? How do you see that also as a driver in the trends and conversations you have with customers? So more and more customers are evaluating and making their choices based on the business impact that the technology will have and the speed and agility with which it will have impact. So given that the rate of change in technology is only increasing, the duration of time in which customers expect to make a business impact is reducing. And with the evolution of the cloud, people's expectation is that flexibility, agility, uh, consumption-based models are what they expect from the technology. And B, they measure the technology on the basis of the business impact that it can have. And they're hoping that people like us will take the piece parts that it takes to make the business impact and abstract that complexity away from the customer. So hence, the, for example, a very good example of that is the rise of the SaaS model. It might solve only a few particular business problems, but people want a targeted, focused solution to a particular business problem on a consumption basis 
where somebody has taken care of all the issues related to infrastructure, networking, software, et cetera, to solve that business problem. So there's good and bad in that, or just opportunity and challenge, because also having someone who has spent a career in the technology industry, it's exciting to see technology professionals being elevated in performance and business conversations, a seat at the table and having conversations about how they can deliver business outcomes. With great power comes great responsibility. And I can imagine as you, as someone who's worked in technology for your career, made that great decision out of university, that it also requires a mind shift. I'm curious about how within Rackspace, this is shifting how Rackspace is evolving, its focus on the solutions that you're bringing to customers, how you work with customers. How is Rackspace evolving to these all these just accelerating trends that you've outlined? We have to change to meet our customers' new expectations. Rackspace is a company that serves not only enterprise customers, but a very large number of smaller customers that we call mid-market customers. And in the mid-market and commercial, which is even smaller customers, we are finding that the need for leveraging technology to survive is only increasing. But the ability of these mid-size or smaller companies to be able to attract and retain talent is decreasing, especially at a time like this where there's such a big demand supply mismatch. So they are looking to us and it is incumbent on us to be able to go to them and bring to them solutions that solve their business problems, which means that we have to train and equip ourselves and our people to have the business conversation with the customer. What is the problem that you are trying to solve? What is the environment that you currently exist? Where do we take you from this environment to be able to solve that business problem in what time frame? And those are skills that we are having to make sure that we refresh them and equip more of our people with those skills. I can imagine, though, that some people might think, well, we always should have been having those conversations <laughs> because it's always been been about the business, but shifting to that and particularly, and I can completely agree in the mid-market and commercial perspective. And I would also say we're seeing businesses in those spaces being more open to, in some cases, leapfrog and adopt technology at a faster pace than large, big enterprise companies because they don't have the legacy set of applications and infrastructure that they're challenged to keep going and that just the scale of evolving is, is changing. So we're seeing the appetite even, they're hungrier to use that technology. But it sounds like that positions Rackspace to deliver a more valuable impact to those customers. Absolutely. And you're very right on the leapfrogging point. The advantages of incumbency are decreasing. They're decreasing for our customers. And they know that if they don't take advantage of the new solutions, new price points, new business models, new ways of addressing their customers' need, if they don't take advantage of it, somebody else will. So uh, absolutely, it is top of mind for most of our customers. So Rackspace and VMware have been very strong partners for many years. And we you know, have some fantastic joint offerings together, really Rackspace offerings built on VMware with Rackspace services for VMware Cloud and Rackspace Elastic Engineering for VMware. I'm curious in your mind, how are those offerings equipped to address these customers evolving needs that you see? And where do you see even more opportunity for us to partner together? So Rackspace and VMware have had a long-standing, very strong relationship, and we have had it across our offering profile. So we use many of your technologies. We have been strong partners. We have uh, approached the market together. We have launched these new offerings, such as Elastic Engineering for VMware, keeping in mind what we talked about earlier, which is the emerging need of the customer to A, meet the skills gap that they are experiencing, and B, do it with a solution that is agile and can meet their evolving needs. They also want to leverage new technologies because of if they don't, somebody else will, right? And, and what I talked about earlier saying and a better designed solution or a well-designed solution is so much more efficient. So how are they going to build the expertise, for example, on containerization with Tanzu or with microservices with NSX? 
most clients do not have the wherewithal to either build that capability or even if they build it to be able to retain it and to be able to do it in a time frame that meets their business objectives. Nobody is making two-year, three-year plan for deploying business functionality. Now they are making two-quarter, three-quarter plans for deploying it. So that's where it opens up opportunities for us to partner very closely with VMware and come up with new offerings like Elastic Engineering for VMware, as well as on new technologies that I talked about just now. We are finding customers hungry for it. As you know, there's a very large installed base of VMware in the marketplace, and the customer's leverage of those applications will remain for a long time, even as they build new applications using things like microservices. That's great. We're very happy and so excited about the partnership. It is a very strong growing area of our business as well, and just very much see it meeting a need. I'm wondering, again, as the the leader of the Americas region for Rackspace, when we think about our joint offerings, if there are any particular success stories or company successes that come to mind over the last couple of years, whether sharing names or not sharing to protect your sources. But I was wondering if you could share a couple of real examples, tangible examples that bring to life the trends and the challenges about how these solutions have helped some of these customers. Here's one example. Rackspace and VMware have a large joint client in the consulting space where we have both partnered to deliver new platforms for the client and we are modernizing their environment using VCF and NSXT to bring them speed and flexibility to their digital business unit. The digital business unit's value proposition is to help bring speed and agility to their end customers so that digital business unit by itself needs to be agile and fast and flexible. And that's the solution that we have jointly built. We were talking about Elastic Engineering for VMware. So this is a client that also uses our Elastic Engineering for VMware suite. And uh, that is a unique way for them to get cloudy outcomes, cloudy in terms of agility, flexibility, pay as you go, pay only for what you use, et cetera. And it's a very, very, very successful partnership between all three, the client, VMware, and Rackspace. It's a model. It sounds like a a very successful model, and we look forward to replicating it many, many times together. I also wanted to get your lens on, I know at various times in your career, you have focused on specific industries, particularly I think in your time at DXC and even at your career at HP, when it was HP. One of the areas that I think we at VMware are continuing to talk about and see evolve is the focus from either a vertical lens or an industry-specific lens, which is an interesting topic because a lot of the technology is very horizontal in what it delivers in terms of speed, agility, delivering faster business solutions, ways to engage with the customer. We're also experiencing that customers want, especially in a very customer-focused approach, you to speak with them about their problems, their context, their particular challenges. I'm curious whether and how you leading the Americas region bring a industry or vertical market type of approach. Is that a way that you work with customers? How do you balance that versus a relatively horizontal set of technology offerings? It's something that we have to balance all the time. I fully agree with you that customers are looking for people who can understand their business problem and speak their language. At the same time, at least in the marketplace and the people that Rackspace works with, they are not expecting Rackspace to be the experts in their business area. They are the expert. So our responsibility here and the way we are organizing is that we have people who have deep domain expertise in certain vertical industries. For example, I have a entire organization, which is called Rackspace Government Services, which is focused on the federal and state government business. And it has people who are steeped in that segment. Similarly, we have a vertical focus on healthcare, for example. So our way of approaching this is to have a a set of people who understand the dimensions and the language and the business challenges and the emerging developments in those industries. B, are able to therefore understand and articulate a customer's problem in the customer's language. 
and then have experience of bringing technology solutions to solve that problem. Our mindset is in these discussions is a do with mindset, not a do to mindset. So we, we work with the customer. The customer is the lead on the business problem. We have the lead on understanding the business problem and bringing the right technology solution to the customer. And then we jointly iterate for it. And I think as we discussed at the top of this podcast, as we recognize that all businesses are technology business and the true goal of technology is to solve business problems, there is the need for people who are talking to the customer to be talking in their language. That does not take away from the importance of the horizontal technology and the innovation that we bring here. Uh, That is the base of it. That's the foundation of it. So as I say to our team from time to time, the vertical domain expertise is like spice to food. So some of it is necessary to add flavor and color to the dish, but too much of it will burn the mouth. So make sure that we have the right balance between bringing the best horizontal technologies and an understanding of the vertical domain where we are applying it. I love that analogy that it adds value, but you want to add the spice and the additional flavor, but you don't want to overwhelm and mask the substance of underneath. I also love, I wrote this down, I'm going to quote you. I love the do with mindset versus do to mindset. So I think a lot of time in the technology industry, we tend to want to think about do to, and it's really about doing with where that collaboration and that value can really surface. You've mentioned several times that every company is becoming a technology company. We've all, and those of us in this industry have seen, whether it's disruption, acceleration, just the pace tremendously change over the last couple of years, and things are just accelerating. I know that over the course of your career, you've been involved in numerous change management initiatives, and I don't think there's a company in our industry, whether it is a technology vendor, a technology partner, or a company that is using technology, which I think we've agreed is just about every company out there, that isn't going through some kind of transformation today, whether it's SaaS, how they work with their customers, how they work with their employees, et cetera. So transformation and change management, I'm sure is top of mind for everybody listening to our conversation today. Given your experience, what advice and best practices would you offer for leaders that are engaged in driving transformation in their companies and leading change? The developments in the world, including the pandemic, have actually accelerated the pace of change and we are all living it. So some of my realizations and what I am learning and what I am communicating is that while we do live in a rapidly changing world and the rate of change is only increasing, we need to be spending as much time rethinking as we do thinking. Because I think many of our assumptions that we might have had prior need to be rethought. And I think many of our colleagues and employees did do that during the pandemic. So for example, I was talking to a group just last week and there was this discussion about burnout. And one of the observations that we came to was that the antidote to the burnout is not necessarily less work. It is actually more meaning. People are looking for, for example, meaning in what they're doing. And if we can draw a parallel, a genuine parallel, to the fact that the meaning in our work is that we are helping businesses become better. Uh, That meaning is valuable to people. So I think in in terms of change, we have to, of course, begin with people. We are in a, you know, we might be in a technology business, but it is fundamentally a people business. Every business is a people business. And uh, the first part that I think of is that talented people are attracted to work for those who care for them. So the foundation has to be a, environment that is demonstrably cares for its people and cares for its customers. I also find that people are remarkably open to feedback when they believe it's genuinely intended to help them. So regular communication and honest communication, both on what is going well and what can be done better. I think that progressively, people are looking to be empowered in making the decisions that they may need to make to be able to deliver the outcomes. And that's good. It frees up managers to set overall goals rather than do day-to-day monitoring. I find that our bringing this back to Rackspace, that the core values we have, and we have five of them, excellence, customer-driven, expertise, agility, and compassion. And we wrote these up before the pandemic, well before the pandemic. 
if we follow those in our environment, then we are able to guide the organization and our clients through the change that they are experiencing. I love that. So the three big kind of pillars that I heard you share is one, begin with people and connect the change to meaning for the people in terms of how they can deliver impact. Number two, I heard regular and honest, probably frequent communication about the change. And then third, I think something that's really critical is empowering people to be able to make decisions, giving that capability as three critical best practice, which regardless of change, sound like just solid principles for excellent management and stewardship in general. When I think about a change, I'm sure every time you work with a customer, it's about change. Otherwise, why would they work with you? They're trying to do something different than the current state that they're in. As you think about your delivery methodology and the way you work with customers, Does Rackspace bring in some of those same principles into your approach in working with your customers? Yes. And we have, over the last few years, enhanced our delivery methodology, customer interaction methodology, implementation methodology to reflect many of these changes. So one of them is a new one, which in addition to the three that I talked about, is speed and agility. And that's what the cloud has driven people to expect in every life of business, So the expectations that things will happen instantly has increased all over. Everybody is expecting things to be at the speed of their iPhone or their Android device. Exactly. It's an instant gratification. So for example, our business processes, we have evolved and improved to be able to interact with customer in synchronous real-time model to be able to understand needs and implement it rather than in a sequential model. because that is what the customer's expectation is. And therefore, our work procedures and business processes need to evolve to meet those expectations. And we have done that across a number of our work processes. I'm sure that absolutely differentiates and sets Rackspace apart because that's so valued. And not all companies can do that. That requires operational investment probably handy that you were the chief operating officer before. So you were able to set yourself up for success in in this new role. Because I think attention to operations, attention to systems and capability and automation is so important for every company these days. I want to shift direction and talk about the war for talent. Several times you've mentioned the skills gap, the gap between supply and demand of talent, both technical, but I'm sure there's also account management, customer management, It's very fierce in our industry. How are you and how is Rackspace doing in that war on talent? And have you made any changes as a company to dial up in particular ways to better position you to both attract, but it's also about retaining key talent as well? I think for every company today and more so in the technology industry, this is a key topic of interest. So my first observation here is that war for talent is over and talent has won. There are a few things that we are working on. We are fortunate to be in an industry that has a lot of demand, is broadly well-paying, is broadly satisfying work. So in this industry, I think what is critical is to give people the ability to work with like-minded people, do a meaningful job, make a difference, and to empower them to deliver their very best. Among other things that we are doing, one is that we are giving our people the opportunity to upskill and reskill so that we have people that are directed to the new technologies, which are more in demand and whose market worth, the people's market worth goes up as well because they have reskilled to the new, more on demand technology. So we have an internal program called TOPS. We are fond of acronyms, which helps us select people who are, if I may say, in legacy technologies and put them in a dedicated three-month full-time reskilling program during which they have to pass various exams and tests. It's an intense program. At the end of which, if they pass it, if they clear it, then they are placed into new roles with on these newer technologies and their compensation and benefits get addressed or increased to meet the market price of those skill sets. 
So we make the investment in the training and then we make sure that the employee benefits from it by having their compensation, et cetera, adjusted. We are finding not only a significantly positive reception of it, but also a large number of people wanting to go through the program and upskill themselves. We are sourcing talent globally. We are hiring across all levels and we are growing our own talent by reskilling people in newer technologies. And all of us have to do this. That's the only way that we'll have sufficient number of people and talent to be able to meet our customers' expectation. That's a, a very impressive investment that Rackspace is making in its people and its talent. But I'm sure that the employees who are, had the opportunity to go through this program value that investment in them, which provides a deeper connection to Rackspace. And, and the win is that they're up-leveled for them, up-leveled for you, and up-leveled for your customers and able to deliver better value for your customers. Over the last two years, I know we've all been faced with the favorite word for a while was unprecedented. Unprecedented times, unprecedented circumstances, but all of us have been challenged in numerous ways. As you look at your long career as a leader, I'm wondering what you've learned about yourself as a leader, how your style or approach as a leader has been challenged and changed and evolved over the last couple of years. Over the last uh, couple of years, uh, my realization in terms of the importance of people being able to balance their life has increased. And that's where that discussion, for example, I was referring to where the things that people can do to prevent burnout has come to the fore. I've also found that most people drive themselves hard to achieve the outcome that they want to deliver. And therefore, monitoring does not really add value, at least in our industry. I think empowerment and freedom adds more value. I've also found that one has to be deliberate with one's use of time and one's prioritization. I think the pandemic, uh, which sent all of us to work from our home, raised the likelihood that we not realize how much of stress we were putting on ourselves and therefore the appropriate management of time and making sure that we take care of ourselves became even, even more important. I think there's a lot of information and tools and assets that organizations made available to their employees. We certainly did, such that people could deal with this change. I think providing those tools is fantastic. Personally, I have to share that it's always a challenge for me to use them. Well, I'm very curious to see how we start going back to the offices. So if I think of it just my personal time, that's an hour, hour and a half each morning where I used to get ready, have commute time, travel. Now it's filled with Zoom calls and making that break back. I think it's going to be adjustment for everybody, but probably a healthy adjustment in helping provide some of that breathing time and some of those boundaries and balance that you reference. The, the great experiment will continue. So Broto, as we wrap up our time together today, I wanted to focus on some fun kind of personal questions. I'm curious as to, is there a book or a podcast that you're reading these days that you, I don't know, is particularly engaging, enlightening, something that you would recommend to our audience? Yeah, so I just finished reading this new book by Arthur Brooks called From Strength to Strength. It basically talks about how to live the sort of the second half of your professional life. I'm much more than in the second half. I found it a fascinating book, so I just finished reading it and I was looking through it again just to make sure that I had uh, absorbed some of the key point. I listen to quite a few podcasts and that's what keeps me engaged in things when one is not working, work out. And I'm an avid listener, for example, of in audio of the entire Economist every week. So that takes up many hours. So I read and I listen to podcasts. That's fantastic. What is an essential piece of technology that you couldn't live without for your day or that has been essential in particular for you surviving the pandemic over the last two years? I think the one piece of technology that for, I think for most of us is absolutely indispensable is our cell phone. And that supercomputer in our pocket allows us to do so much that if there was one technology that I would like to retain among all it would be that. Finally, I would love to wrap up with this question, which is, 
what is the best advice that you have ever received professionally or personally? It's to do your job or your role diligently and well and not worry too much about the outcomes. The outcomes will follow. And I think that is the core of Vad Gita, which I have read. And, and I think there is a lot of truth in it. I love that. And I can see from the other perspectives you shared in our conversation around focusing on employees, focusing on customers, doing what's right, and then good things will follow ties in well to that advice. Subroto, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure getting to know you, hearing about your perspective from your very successful career and how Rackspace is truly differentiating itself in these times of rapid technology change with its customers. Thank you, Kathleen. This was a pleasure and I'm honored to have been on your podcast. I really enjoyed that conversation with Subroto and I hope you did too. It was particularly interesting to me to discuss how the Rackspace and VMware partnership is helping mid-market customers successfully accelerate their digital transformation journeys by deploying VMware cloud solutions. To learn more about Rackspace, please visit rackspace.com and to connect with Sobroto, you can find him on LinkedIn. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Remember to subscribe, follow, and review VMware Partnership Perspectives podcast from your streaming platform of choice. For more information on VMware's partner programs, please visit partnerexecutiveedge at vmware.com. I'm Kathleen Tandy. Thanks for listening and hope to see you next time.